Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about chapter 24 of Teach Yourself Grammar, which is about adverbial clauses. So let's get some context on adverbial clauses. First of all, they are subordinate clauses. In chapter 22, we discussed content subordinate clauses, which are nominal in function, and their most common role is to be a verb or noun complement. Last chapter we talked about relative clauses which are adjectival and their role is going to be a noun or nominal modifier. In today's chapter we'll talk about the last kind of subordinate clause which is the adverbial subordinate clause and its role is to be a verb or sentence modifier. And some good news here, which is that the adverbial clauses are going to be the easiest kind to identify. So let's take a look at how we can define adverbial clauses. Well, they're simply subordinate clauses with an adverbial function. They are going to be headed by an adverbial conjunction. And because they are adverbial, they are more mobile and also an adverbial substitution test is going to work. So let's take a look at two examples. First of all, the sentence, I was ready when the train arrived, which consists of an independent clause, I was ready, and a dependent or subordinate clause, when the train arrived. This subordinate clause is adverbial because it starts with an adverbial conjunction, when, and furthermore provides uh, adverbial information, namely information about time, which is going to modify the clause, I was ready. In order to form the subordinate clause, all we do is we take an independent clause, the train arrived, and we add the adverbial conjunction at the beginning, making it when the train arrived. Now, in the sentence, I was ready when the train arrived, we can also reverse the order of those two elements putting the subordinate clause first. So that will become, when the train arrived, I was ready. So uh, we can reverse the order, and uh, if the adverbial clause comes at the beginning, we just add a comma, and uh, that's all we need there. Uh, secondly, also note that an adverb substitution test is going to, to work. So I can substitute a typical adverb of time, namely then, uh, for the whole clause. So I was ready then, or then I was ready. Taking a look at a slightly more complex example, uh, we have a sentence such as, we didn't leave because the movie was great. So again, here we have an independent clause, we didn't leave, which is the matrix clause. Then we have the subordinate clause, because the movie was great. This is simply an independent clause, the movie was great, uh, which to which then is added the um, adverbial conjunction because and we have uh, the subordinate clause because the movie was great. Again, this is adverbial uh, because uh, here we have the adverbial reason uh, because, uh, which is modifying we didn't leave. Why did we not leave? Because the movie was great. So in this sentence can also be, uh, the order of elements can also be reversed so that we have uh, because the movie was great, uh, beginning that sentence, um, and then all we need is a comma. So, because the movie was great, we didn't leave. Uh, in this instance, the substitution test also works, but we need a, uh, a slightly uh, longer phrase, such as for some reason. So, we didn't leave for some specific reason. That reason is because the movie was great. So, to identify adverbial clauses, uh, th these are sometimes, uh, they look very similar to content clauses, but just remember that because they are modifiers, uh, adverbial clauses are going to uh, differ in the way the movement, deletion, and substitution works from content clauses, which are nominal. So taking a look at two sentences, I was ready when the train left versus I know when the train left. So we have two subordinate clauses, when the train left, which are actually identical in form, but they are going to differ in function. 
to see how that's the case, let's try the movement test. So, when the train left, I was ready. Which works. Versus, when the train left, I know. Uh, which I like to call uh, Yoda speak because although it's probably on some level a legitimate sentence, it certainly sounds very strange. And so um, you can distinguish here then between a legitimate adverbial clause and one that is a content clause. Secondly, if we try the deletion test, we have in one case, I was ready, uh, which I think works, versus I know. And I know sounds like it would work, um, but only as the answer to a question. Uh, when did the train leave? I know, I know when it left. Uh, but in this instance, we have omitted important information, which um, substantively changes the nature of the verb. And so in this instance, uh, it does not work. The deletion test does not work for the content clause, but it does work for the adverbial clause. And finally, when you try the substitution test, and you say, well, you know, what sort of word would make sense if I, you know, try a, um, a, a substitution test, uh, then you would have a word like then, I was ready then for the adverbial, and uh, versus for the content, you would have something like um, I know it. Uh, and because then is an adverb and it is a personal pronoun, that sort of tells you um, what the underlying clause type is that you are dealing with. Next, let's take a look at how to punctuate adverbial clauses. And this is pretty simple in that when the adverbial clause comes first, we just separate it with a comma. So when the train arrived, comma, I was ready. And also uh, just remember that adverbial clauses are headed by an adverbial conjunction. And the adverbial conjunction and the original independent clause that follows, they have a tight bond uh, so we don't really throw commas uh, in between them or um, move the conjunction around. On the other hand, when we have a conjunctive adverb, uh, just remember that these are like individual adverbs, so they are mobile. They can be moved around, and when they, we move them around, we set them off with punctuation marks. For example, moreover, she was confident. Could become, she, moreover, was confident. Or, she was, moreover, confident, and finally, she was confident, moreover. So you can see that that moreover can basically go in every single position in the sentence. And if it comes at the beginning of the sentence, we just need an initial comma. If it comes at the end, we need a final comma. And if it comes somewhere in the middle, we're going to set off the whole thing with two commas. A small point to remember there, which is just that conjunctive adverbs can also be multi-word units, such as in addition and on the other hand. And uh, the way that you know that this is a multi-word unit uh, is that we do not substitute uh, related words. So we don't say, you know, uh, in multiplication or uh, in division, uh, we merely say in addition. Uh, nor do we say, you know, on the fifth hand, uh, on the seventh hand, on the eighth hand, we just uh, have the two phrases on the one hand and on the other hand. If you have trouble distinguishing the, um, you know, the adverbial uh, conjunctions from the conjunctive adverbs, which um, you know, is something that we covered in chapter eight, just go back and have another look at that chapter, which is entitled Conjunctions and Interjections. Okay, so wrapping everything up, all subordinate clauses are headed by a subordinating conjunction. That is essentially the clue that you are looking for to in, fa in fact uh, spot any subordinate clause. You look for that conjunction. Just as with phrases, the main roles that subordinate clauses play are going to be nominal, adjectival, and adverbial, right? So um, we saw that, for example, with the different types of verb phrases, uh, you know, being the ing phrases are nominal and adjectival. Um, and so uh, it's, it's the same case here. The best way to distinguish between the different kinds of uh, clauses, the different kinds of subordinate clauses, the nominal, adjectival, and adverbial, is to try the movement, deletion, and substitution test. And finally, when we're talking about specifically adverbial conjunctions, again, 
So if they are at the beginning of a sentence, we set off adverbial clauses with a comma.